For whatever reason, 100k a year in salary seems to be some sort of magical number that everybody strives towards. So today, I want to present you a realistic way to achieve that. But be warned, it's nothing fancy and you won't be lying on the beach with a cocktail in your hand while doing so. You will be down in the trenches digging through dirt, but you will earn 100k a year in salary. Hi, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe. And for those of you who don't know me, I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way with you. So you already got the dollar signs in your eyes and are eager to know how to do that? Well, I will tell you. Freelancing. But before you say, what a stupid mf -er, wasted all my time just to tell me the obvious, please hear me out. I would like to ask you one question. If it's so obvious and you want to get those magical 100k a year, why are you not doing it? You don't know whether you have enough experience or how to get clients? We will talk about those reasons in a minute, but first, let's get some math done. Let's say a year has 220 workdays, and this takes already things like weekends, vacations and sick days into account. We work for about 8 hours a day and the X marks our hourly rate. And the result is our magical 100k in salary. We then solve this equation for X, which again is our hourly rate, and we get that we need to earn 5681 dollar, euros, whatever, an hour to reach our goal of 100k a year. While this is not as easy in employment, it's uh, quite realistic to reach that as a freelancer. With that out of the way, there is now some important questions to answer. What can I offer that is worth 56.81 per hour and how to find someone willing to pay me that? When I started freelancing, I've already worked as a software developer and a consultant for about three years. So I already had some working experience, but still hesitated for a long time to make the step. My primal fear was, but I don't have any references as a freelancer, so what if I quit my job and then don't find any clients? So I understand that making that step depending on where you start and how deep you can fall might be intimidating. And being a freelancer is also not for everyone. Working as a freelancer has many benefits, but certainly also downsides. And my next video will actually be about exactly this topic. So I will not focus much on that here, but focus more on how to get started. A friend of mine once told me an analogy when I was talking with him about quitting my job and doing freelancing. So he told me, it's like walking a tightrope. At least I think that's the correct word. So what I mean is in a circus, when the people walk over this wire or rope, like up in the air with those pole in their hands, you know, so I mean that. So hopefully tightrope is the correct thing. So anyways, you practice it with a net all the time. And you know that you can do that without any problems. But now is actually the first time where you remove the net and you try it without the net beneath you. And this is exactly how it felt for me when I finally did quit my job and then started freelancing. Because I kind of knew that I can do it because I already did it as a consultant. But now I don't have the support of the big company behind me and I'm on my own, so without a net. And this being said, I will share my experience in this area as someone who does freelancing for over seven years now. So how do you reach this mystical 100k? The most obvious excuse for not even trying is, but I don't have much experience, I'm not attractive in the job market. And that one might seem legit at first, as it also seemed for me when I was thinking about it, but let me tell you what I have seen in projects. Without much experience, you will have a hard time getting jobs on Fiverr or Upwork because the people using those services usually don't have much money to spend and want the most bang for the buck. And they get that from people that actually know what they are doing. But this is fine, there are other ways. Without having much experience, it might be better to target clients that don't care that much about money. That is usually corporate clients and bigger companies because for the managers, it's not their personal money, it's just a number in some system or whatever. And boy oh boy, can I tell you, have I seen some stupid spendings in my time in projects. You could get into the project as getting some working experience by charging a lower rate. Because after some months, you will be familiar with the tools and you will actually be able to do things. And the company gets a return by now having a capable worker for a lower rate. Usually a good way is to go through some, as I call them, pimp companies. That are companies that basically just sell freelancers to bigger projects. And the reasoning behind that is that the bigger project doesn't want to deal with all the individual contracts with like 20 freelancers or so. And so the intermediaries step in, or as I call them, pimp companies, and manage all those. And then they get a cut of about like 10 to 15% for that work. And I'm not telling you that those projects are out there like fish in the sea, 
but I've seen it quite some times in the projects where I worked in in the past. Just do some googling and find those PIM companies in your country. I'm certain they are everywhere and get added to their database. The more companies you get to add your CV into their system, the higher the chance of getting a project. At some point a company might be desperate for someone to do the job and then even with not that much experience you might look like a godsend. It's basically all about increasing the probabilities. You need to put yourself out there and give it a shot. That being said, you still need to have basic experience. If you don't know how to code at all, how do you expect someone to pay you 100k a year, right? If you already have a job before you're all hyped up and run into your HR department and hand in your two weeks notice, I would recommend doing some preparation first. Make sure you have some money on the side, you don't know how long it will take to get a project and also how long the project might go. Maybe you get hired for a project and then the project is shut down after only a month or so. Everything can happen and one should not fool around with his livelihood. Start getting yourself listed with those PIM companies and other services while still being employed. This way you have a head start and also get an idea for the responses that the companies will give you. If you are currently working with a client, as I did as a consultant, ask your client what they would think about contracting you as a freelancer. That was actually how I got my first freelancing gig. The client already knows you and your work and as a freelancer you probably can offer a more attractive hourly rate than the company you are currently working for with all its overhead and things like that. Another excuse might be, but I don't know how to get a project. You can look up some of those PIM companies and hand in your CV, but usually this means that you need to have at least something to put into your CV, if not working experience, then at least a degree or anything. If you don't have that, but have played around with various technologies in, for example, demo projects and actually can do things, but have not much to show for, then I would say that the modern and alternative ways are more appropriate. You can try and prove yourself at services like Upwork or Fiverr. It's not easy, but it's possible. And as I said before, you need to be able to actually do something because people on those services usually don't have that much money and so they expect a certain outcome for their money. Also, it's a good idea to hang out at co-working spaces and other places where startups might be. Startups often have the problem of finding developers because Many developers prefer working at bigger companies that can offer more benefits like for example a company car and things like that that startups typically cannot match. So this might be a good place to start getting the first freelancing gigs and the previously calculated hourly rate is also realistic for startups. In software development there are many areas and each is slightly different I would say. For example to find clients as someone doing front-end development might be different than for someone doing machine learning or data engineering. There are plenty of possibilities around, you just need to get a bit creative. You can even try platforms like for example LinkedIn and try to get some gigs there. I would say that the success rate of each of those ways is dependent on your experience. But as mentioned earlier, it is possible to get projects even with not that much experience. It's not easy, but it's possible. I personally prefer having projects at bigger companies rather than gigs on Fiverr and such. The reason for that is that bigger projects have also bigger budgets and you usually don't have to explain yourself for every hour that you charge. Which actually can be the case with smaller companies and smaller projects because usually their budgets are tight. Also the bigger projects tend to go on for at least half a year and usually you don't have to worry much about getting other gigs during this time even though it is smart to plan for what will happen after that project. If you listened for my rambling for this long, you might as well go down there and go completely insane on that like button. And also while you are down there, you can also leave me a comment and tell me your thoughts on this topic and whether doing freelancing is a consideration for you or whether freelancing is totally not for you. Yeah, leave a comment down below and thank you very much. See you in the next one.